Okay, so I can see the participant number is climbing. That's a good sign. So we will just wait a few moments until everyone has connected. Right. I think in the next few moments, uh, some more people will join us. But uh, yeah, we have uh, a full program for this webinar. So I suggest we, we already start with some introductory uh, words. And um, yeah, a very warm welcome to our webinar on uh, how to align the HR function and business strategy for organizational success. Uh, my name is Elizabeth Niendorf. Um, and it is my great pleasure to open uh, this webinar, which is actually the first one in a series of webinars that uh, we are organizing as the EMFP HR Action Group in collaboration with ILO uh, Social Finance. And uh, for those of you who have not heard about the EMFB uh, HR Action Group uh, so far, let me just uh, mention two words. Uh, so the Action Group uh, has been founded some five years ago in 2017. And since then, we are actively promoting HR as um, an integral part of business um, uh, practices in financial service providers. And uh, ADG together with uh, the ILO, and let me have a look, I think uh, our colleague from ILO, uh, Patricia Richter is also joining us here uh, today. Uh, so we are heading the EMFP HR Action Group. And uh, for those of you who have not cooperated with uh, ADG so far, um, we are a management academy for the German cooperative sector offering um, trainings and capacity building measures for executives and top managers for the German um, cooperative sector. And at the international level, we are actually uh, offering a broad range of uh, trainings uh, online and uh, offline, so presential trainings, but also capacity building measures and um, advisory and consultancy services for cooperative banks, of course, but also for microfinance institutions uh, on topics such as, for example, um, leadership, HR and talent management, MSME finance, just to, to name a few. And uh, yes, today we will kick off uh, the series uh, of webinars uh, and deal with the topic how to align um, HR the HR function with business uh, strategy. And I'm very happy to welcome our two uh, panelists to, to this webinar. Um, we have uh, Mr. Hugues Bonch uh, with us from um, Baobab, Madagascar. Uh, happy to have you, Mr. Bonch. Uh, and also um, Mr. Manusha Sitaishvili from Crystal, uh, Georgia. Very nice to, to have you with us. And let me also uh, very warmly welcome uh, Ms. Isabel Katthagen, uh, the director of ADG International, who will join me in the facilitation of this uh, webinar here today. Uh, so what are we going to do in the next uh, hour? Um, we will explain why HR is crucial to operationalize your business strategy. And we will discuss together with our panelists different approaches how to do this actually. Um, so uh, our panelists will share their experiences in strengthening the HR function uh, and uh, tell us what are their lessons learned in this respect. And I would say, without further ado, let's start right away. And I'm going to share 
uh, a presentation so that you can uh, follow us. And before we really jump into the topic, we want to know uh, your opinion. And uh, I'm going to uh, show you uh, this slide here. And um, if you have a look at the chat, you're going to see uh, a link, the same link that is uh, posted here uh, on, on the slide. And this link leads you to uh, a Menti, Mentimeter survey. So I'm kindly asking all of you to click on the link and uh, have a look at the question that, that appears uh, and tell us about uh, your opinion. So we are asking you there what you think is the most crucial factor for HR to be effective. So you are going to see, I think, seven, um, seven or yeah, seven different options. And I'm giving you a moment to um, go through those options, read them and choose the one that, uh, yeah, from your point of view is the most important one for HR to be effective. And uh, yeah, I'm just going to wait uh, a few moments that everyone has the uh, opportunity to choose one factor here. And I can see already in the back end that uh, there are many different opinions actually, which is uh, quite interesting. And in a second, I'm going to share the results with you, of course. So for those of you who might have joined the webinar a few minutes later, you will find in the chat a link and uh, we kindly ask you to click on that link. It leads you to a Mentimeter survey. You will see um, a question with seven different options and please choose the factor that you think is the most important one for HR to be effective. And the results are still changing. So we will wait a few, few more moments before we show the results. Okay, then let's have a look. And this is how for the time being, you see that the numbers are still changing, but I think we already have one, one winner, winning factor here, which is uh, the option HRD strategy is reviewed annually to ensure its alignment with business uh, strategy. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm just uh, announcing here that those factors, of course, have not been chosen randomly. And uh, Isabel will tell us more about uh, how we chose those, those factors. Absolutely. Thank you very much, um, Elizabeth. So maybe if you do look at, at the different answers possible in this question uh, or for this question, maybe you can see a bit of a pattern. Um, I'm actually quite happy to see that, that the answer that was uh, so far selected most is the one uh, named H HRD strategy is reviewed annually to ensure its alignment with business strategy. Uh, the second one is uh, the organization segments, its human resources and defines HRD strategy for each key segment. There's two answers that were not selected at all. Um, and if we, if we look at them and we try to, to identify a pattern, one could say that these were split into two different categories, uh, one being um, the strategic element of HR and the other being the more administrative uh, look to HR. Um, so why why have we done this, and and what does it actually mean? What is what is the difference um, and uh, between administrative HR and strategic HR, and why have we actually chosen this uh, this segmentation um, of of elements? 
Um, now, if, if we do look at the next slide of the presentation, in fact, um, we will be able to see um, and, and re-see the, the answers uh, that were part of this Mentimeter. Um, the difference actually and why we have selected is um, that if we look at on the one hand at the so-called administrative HR, we look at something that is a rather generic function. Uh, we look at elements such as manpower planning, um, typical hiring and firing of employees in an organization. Payroll processing uh, is an element that is allocated to administrative HR. Uh, we're looking at the planning of of the performance appraisal process or um, the performance management in general. So basically one could say this is a more routine HR related administration of, of and functions. Um, yet, if we look at the answer that, that was selected most um, amongst uh, the participants of this session uh, right now, saying HRD strategy is reviewed annually to ensure its alignment with business strategy. If we look at uh, the column administrative HR, these, these things will not allow for us to actually really review um, exactly this, uh, these both, both elements and ensure this alignment um, of our HRD strategy and our business strategy. Um, so if we look at what is actually strategic HR, um, we look at, at elements such as proactive talent management being um, the, the, the necessity to actually identify those skills and competencies that are needed in an organization in order to be able to achieve the strategy that is set. Um, we are uh, looking at identifying the competencies that we currently have on board as part of our employees. Um, and we compare with those needed in order to actually achieve our strategy. And we continuously plan um, uh, and effectively manage the closing of the gap. Um, skill development, uh, development of core competencies um, here is, is a relevant um, element. And at the end of the day, what we're looking to do is uh, to actually develop these core co competencies and skills that allow uh, for the creation of a competitive advantage through being able to uh, create innovations in be it product or be it processes or be it technology in order to actually make a difference for the organization. Um, and if we actually purely focus on the administrative elements of HR, um, we, uh, one could actually say we're hindering the organization in achieving its strategy. So um, our opinion and experience actually is that it is important to, to focus on the right hand of the table that we're currently looking at in order to, to allow for the organization to have a chance to actually achieve and, and um, uh, resu result in positive um, uh, performance for the strategy and in, in continuously developing as an organization, no matter what the goals are that, that are set um, for, for the organization as such. Um, and uh, this is why I'm actually quite happy to see that um, from, from the six answers available, uh, six, yeah, six answers available, three of them were allocated towards uh, the strategic side uh, and the other three towards administrative and, and the two that were not selected at all were actually um, administrative ones. So uh, I'm happy to see that, uh, that you seem to share our opinion that as a crucial factor for HR to actually be effective, it is important to, to focus on the strategic elements rather than uh, purely uh, focus on uh, those um, that, that are administrated as such. Um, now, maybe a bit of a bumpy bridge, however, um, 
what we did as, as an HR action group uh, was also to identify um, different, uh, different activities, different, um, uh, one could say different approaches to what our practices in HR. And uh, with that, I pass over to Elizabeth to give a bit of an introduction into, um, into what we did as an action group in this uh, area of topic. Exactly. And actually, it uh, gives us the, the chance to compare somehow the pattern and the results that uh, we have seen now from, from this group here, from this group of participants that are uh, in our webinar, uh, compared to the whole, let us say, microfinance sector. Uh, and why is this? Because um, actually, uh, last year, the Action Group um, developed and implemented a, a survey that was, um, yeah, that was distributed worldwide among MFIs and we had quite a good response rate. Um, and uh, in the survey, uh, MFIs were asked about their HR practices. Um, so the response rate was, uh, you know, in, in total 342, so really a, a, good, a good number. Then after cleaning up the data, um, we had 143 uh, fully complete uh, answers that we could use for the analysis. And um, for those of you who are uh, interested in, in this topic and in this study, I really recommend to have a closer uh, look at this uh, survey report. And uh, our colleagues from EMFP are going to uh, post a link in the chat right now uh, where you will be able to download the whole uh, report and have a closer look at uh, uh, yeah, the, the study, the results, and um, actually what you can also see in, in this uh, survey report is somehow a global benchmark of uh, HR practices in the microfinance sector. And um, presenting the, the whole uh, survey report would be really stretching our time budget uh, today, but we have brought you one interesting insight here, uh, where participants of the survey were asked uh, about uh, a list of processes that, that you can see on this uh, slide here. And they were asked to identify which of those processes they are implementing in their organization. Um, and I just want to highlight uh, one response here that's uh, really interesting, and that is the third one. Uh, so uh, a bit more than half of the survey uh, respondents, 40, uh, 54 um, percent, have um, indicated that they review their HR policies to ensure effectiveness and alignment with business strategy uh, each year. And um, of course, there are you know, many uh, different interpretations uh, of, this, of this finding, but one uh, possible interpretation is that um, if uh, they are uh, ticking this response here, then most likely they would have a strategic view uh, on, on HR. Um, and while the others who have not uh, ticked uh, this response, the, the um, 46% of, of survey respondents, they might of course share the view that HR, uh, HR is uh, strategically uh, important, but they seem to not have um, been implementing concrete steps to really promote uh, and strengthen uh, the HR function. Um, and that is actually what we want to uh, focus on in, in the next step to uh, identify and discuss those concrete steps. What can be done to strengthen um, HR? And at this point, I would like to um, actually point out, and you can just bring them all in, I guess, um, and to see. Now, the, the, the question of this webinar is or the title is to say how to align the HR function and business strategy for organizational success. So um, nicely put in the first question, um, one of the crucial elements was exactly this point. However, uh, just acknowledging that this is a crucial factor, factor does not already lead us into actually um, resulting in it and actually living it. So what is it we can do? Um, and as a first step here, uh, we have listed, I would say, the majority or 99% of, of relevant aspects to, um, to HR. Um, we're looking 
had uh, some administrative ele elements such as attraction, recruiting, uh, onboarding, uh, individual development, succession planning, performance management and appraisal, etc. Um, we're, however, also looking at elements that are relevant for the business strategy as such. We're looking at the organizational strategy, um, we're looking at the structure, we're looking at culture and values, uh, we're looking at employee development approaches, we're looking at organizational development. However, just actually knowing these things and following up on them, as well as actually acknowledging the, the crucial uh, and the necessity of aligning um, business strategy and HR, again, does not lead us to actually necessarily succeeding. Um, and uh, what we have done and, and uh, what we believe is, is really important is to see all of these elements and um, identify them as a, as a system. Um, it is practically impossible to actually purely look at culture and values without identifying an organizational strategy. It is almost impossible to, uh, to completely leave out the point of organizational development with this. And then what is also almost impossible to leave out employee development. So basically, in other words, if we look at these elements, none of these um, should be looked at and handled purely in an isolated way. Rather, uh, what is to be done is to actually um, look at them individually, but also link them with those that are relevant. Um, and instead of, um, let's say in a, in a generic way, um, going through each of these topics, uh, what, uh, what we would like to uh, show in the next slide actually is how we can bring um, all of these elements into one picture. And this is, this is what we've done here actually. Um, we've tried to cluster these elements um, and put them into perspective. Uh, in order to allow for, let's say, a, an orientation um, in order to, to support organizations in actually aligning their HR with the business strategy. Um, and if we, if we look at this specific graph here, um, all of these colored um, uh, parts, uh, the yellow ones, as well as the the red one in the middle. This is something that, that a lot of you may have seen before as something called uh, sort of the performance management um, or HRD cycle, or as we call it, the talent management life cycle. We're looking at, um, at the, the sort of route an employee goes to through when entering an organization um, until potentially or maybe uh, actually leaving the organization. All of these elements always with um, a specific um, view and goal to retaining staff within an organization as much as possible. If we just purely look at these things, we could say this is, this is something that could be allocated particularly to the administrative side of HR. However, from our perspective, um, it would not allow to align HR and the business strategy if we leave out all of the other elements. Um, this element of, of talent management lifecycle from our point of view is embedded by the four elements and the, the pieces of the puzzle, puzzle you can see around, the organizational development, the culture and values in an organization, the leadership principles as well as development, and ultimately also employee development. It is practically impossible from our perspective to purely go through the talent management life cycle um, without also bringing these elements into alignment with um, the four pieces of the puzzle around. And um, again, for this to not go somehow all over the place, you can uh, see sort of the, the purple framing around it, the organizational regulatory aspects uh, such as strategy, such as structure, such as policies, as well as compensation models that allow for a frame around um, the uh, more strategic and, and more design-oriented elements. 
Um, we call this uh, this thing here Ashra, which um, uh, from what we understood from, from Hebrew means luck. Um, this is sort of uh, something or uh, luck or happiness even, uh, which is a bit of a uh, positive coincidence actually for us. Ashra is uh, the ADG understanding of strategic HR. Um, and we were quite happy actually to see uh, what, the, what the meaning of Ashra actually is, because we really believe uh, that if uh, HR and all of the related elements, both the administrative ones as well as the strategic ones, are put into one picture and put into alignment and seen as an as entire system as such, if this is actually if this is actually done and followed up on, um, and the guarantee for an organizational success is much much higher than if it were not done. This allows for an organization um, to be uh, uh, to be one could also say a bit more resilient to unexpected changes um, because. Uh, None of these elements are left uh, left out in the dark, but they are considered uh, when building uh, the organization's HR approach. Now, um, the question is again, um, how to now we've put all of these pieces in, into a picture. Um, we said this is this is something that that serves as an orientation, but again, it doesn't mean that it makes it easier for us uh, to bring this into implementation. Um, and this is where Elizabeth has uh, a few ideas uh, that she would like to share with you. Yes, exactly. Uh, and as Isabel said, this can be kind of overwhelming if you think that, oh, where to start <laughs> with, with all these different things. And um, we've prepared uh, two slides uh, for uh, how to uh, use a step-by-step -step, uh, approach and not to feel uh, overwhelmed and uh, overstretched with uh, trying to implement all at once, so to say. Um, so the idea is really um, if you uh, decide uh, that you want to strengthen the HR function in your organization, then we suggest to uh, engage senior management in a strategy workshop uh, following the uh, three steps. And um, I'm going to share those three uh, steps with you, starting with, with a vision board. So basically, um, there the exercise is to, to think of a world where everything is possible and try to imagine where do you see your MFI, your organization in the next 10 years? How would you like to, to uh, yeah, have uh, the organization in 10 years if everything would be possible? And you would uh, somehow describe and, and map, map out uh, the picture of, of your MFI in 10 years um, and use this vision board actually to derive from this an action plan. Um, and uh, there the question is really, what do we need to do to make this vision real? Uh, what kind of culture do we need to um, make our visionary organization look like this? Uh, what kind of people do we need which, which, uh, with which kind of mindset? Um, and there's really the, the interesting part um, uh, linking to HR, where you could derive HR implications. So what are the profiles, the competencies, skills and attitudes that you need to make this vision uh, real? And then finally, the last step, um, map out uh, an HR roadmap uh, and they're really going down to the question what can we do today uh, to attract and retain this talent that we need to make um, the visionary uh, organization uh, come true um, and they're also answering the question how can we develop a culture that allows people to strive for personal and organizational success to identify with company values to be courageous uh, to try out new things and to uh, learn and develop uh, so this is um, a suggestion um, from from our side and let us see now how this uh, could work uh, in practice um, and i would like to uh, with this uh, start our our uh, panel discussion um, to see what uh, Uk and uh, Manusha are uh, telling us about their experiences in strengthening uh, HR. 
And um, I would like to uh, start our, our discussion uh, with, uh, with a question uh, based on your experiences, um, on your opinion, on your view. How would you rate the strategic level of HR in your uh, organization? And uh, maybe we can start with, uh, with Uc from um, uh, Baobab Madagascar to share, to share his perspective here. Thank you, Elizabeth. Uh, thank you, Isabel, for the, the insightful presentation and also the details that you have provided. Um, the, the survey is really uh, revealing on what we've been experiencing the last years. And I'm very happy that the result you are showing fit uh, on what we've been doing in Madagascar uh, the last couple of years or, already. And so just a short presentation on myself. I'm on Hugues Bonch. Uh, the CEO of Baobab Bank Madagascar, a subsidiary of Baobab Group, which is uh, one of the leading microfinance group operating in the in the market. So going straight to the, the question that you, you asked, I think um, from the direction we took two years ago, uh, I can say that today HR is one of the key and strategic uh, division and function we have within the, the organization. Uh, why? Uh, you know, two years ago, uh, we started a journey where we, we came across that we were more goal-centric, uh, focusing on delivering uh, the result, delivering growth, disbursing loans, and availing to our customer product and services without really questioning how we're doing it, without really questioning, uh, do we have profile, do we have competencies in order to deliver in a sustainable way, uh, not only for the short-term result, but in the long run, can we sustain the model, the business model? And we came across that the most important asset we had to invest in was our human capital. So we shifted completely our methodology by putting people in center and defining all our strategy in line with the competencies that we had. And then when we missed something and in order to cover this gap, we had to go and look for uh, for it externally and mix both within the organization so that we can try. So today, uh, there is no decision, uh, there is no uh, business or strategy that is defined without considering the profile, without considering the competencies, without con considering what we really have in order to deliver successfully uh, all these business ideas. And uh, we have done also, we've gone a bit far to say uh, the responsibility is not only within the HR, function, but actually HR is being defined as implemented as a process where across the institution, managers and leaders are given and assigned responsibilities so that they can define and manage their business and land. So today for me, I will say um, HR function uh, as order is one of the key division and the key um, direction we have within the organization. Thanks, uh, thanks a lot. Uh, and uh, with this, uh, I would like to uh, ask uh, Manusha from um, Crystal Georgia uh, about his view on this question. Thank you, Elizabeth. Thank you for your invitation. Good presentation and a lot of insights. Um, I, I don't think a, in a, another way, I think that a company which has um, ambitions and which has um, long-term goals, I could not imagine differently that HR has no uh, crucial and main uh, strategic role in development because uh, I joined the company um, more than 10 years ago. We have a few people in the company. In the beginning, main uh, task was uh, just uh, administration, I mean, uh, so uh, to, uh, to make some administrative jobs, uh, hire people, contracting people, and some, if there was a, some, case, uh, some case of firing too. So this was the main job. But then uh, I, I will uh, divide this time before digitalization, digitalization not only in my company, general digitalization as the happening, as the evidence which change uh, HR market, which change the company because time sped up. And if time sped up, lot of changes in environmental, lot of changes in uh, 
um, such business in people's motivation. Uh, so uh, you should adjust to this change. You should bring new knowledge, new skills. You should maintain this knowledge and skills. So you should um, go in, in a deep and learn business uh, goals, learn business in a oh, and forecast business needs. So it's uh, because of it, uh, I think it's crucial to have HR on a strategic level. And I think uh, anyway, uh, so we, we um, passed the way uh, of this function in our company in the beginning uh, as uh, a lot of other companies, this was a uh, operational uh, department. Now we are on a strategic level, but I think we are in the middle of this road. So we need a lot of things to develop in the future. I mean, uh, so we see ourselves like a, a development platform for the people who, to come to us, to develop their skills with us, to share their knowledge, to share our knowledge and our uh, such a, uh, instruments for development. Uh, so uh, we are on this way, but there is a lot of things to do in the future. So thank you. Thank you, Elizabeth. Thank you, thank you uh, so much. And this is actually, uh, yeah, perfectly building uh, the bridge to our um, second question. So uh, Manusha, you have outlined um, that uh, you would say uh, you are on the way, you are somewhere uh, in the middle. Um, and maybe you can share with us um, what was, what were the success factors or what were things that were helping you to, to start this, to start yeah. this way? Uh, and maybe also on the other hand side, things that are hindering, you know. One of the main point, uh, uh, this challenge was the such a um, uh, out um, such a um, which gave us push. I, I mean, this digitalization and uh, changing. Uh, atmosphere, but the uh, crucial is management decision and uh, uh, founders attitude. Uh, when they see that to have long term goals, and to see that circumstances is changing, you need to adjust, you need to develop people, you need to invest in development. So you need um, strategic HR. So I need, uh, I see, think that um, one of the main point and which help us uh, to have HR on a strategic level, it was the attitude of founders and the management culture and values, how they see the people who are working for the companies and for the customers. They see people as not only the as a, or not only the resources. They see people like a um, uh, ecosystem. In this ecosystem, we are together: founders, uh, customers, people who are working for customers and for the founders. We are together. We are together, br um, uh, bringing value uh, to society. So, um, I think that there is crucial. Uh, the, uh, mindset of founders. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Thank you so much. And uh, Uke, would you would you uh, support those uh, points, and maybe you can share your lessons learned on on, on this journey? And to support what Manucha just mentioned, especially on the technology uh, part, uh, in our case, there was a combination of two factors actually: the technology, as we're operating in a market that is dynamic and moving. And then you need to shift and move toward new uh, competencies. But we do have also the crisis that happened with this coronavirus uh, in beginning of 2020. We found ourselves uh, stuck in the middle of something, the, the, the killing sentence which said business as usual. And unfortunately, business cannot be functioned or cannot be implemented as usual. So you need to go towards something which is completely new. 
And then we've been talking about technology, then you'll quickly realize that this shift, this mindset shift cannot only be done through technology. Yeah, you really need to have internally capacities people will really understand and will, people can really adopt a new way of doing things so that you can first survive, adjust, and then continue delivering your strategy in a very successful way. So two years ago, when this process started with Baobab, we, we, we came across and said, business as usual, we can no longer continue doing it. Exactly. Like what does it take us to move to the next level? What does it take us to move to the uh, next dimension? Then we understand one of the key factors was actually the shift that all of us made in our mind within the organization, started by explaining that we need competencies, we need profile, we need people, and we need to invest in these people so that we can face any challenges that is happening. Saying it's very easy, but then it took us a lot of time to go through explanation, explaining why we are doing what we're doing why we are operating in the market where we are operating, why we are serving customers and how best we can serve them. So the first point was actually making people understand that it was crucial for us to change the way we're doing things. Explaining this through the institution, starting from the senior managers up to the last employee you may find in the institution, making them understand that it's not only about one task, or one function or one direction is actually being a, a, a global, an institution uh, issue that we need to tackle properly and we need to tackle together. So the, the, the success factor in this mind shift, mindset shift was that the understanding and the taking from the employee, from the staff, from those who are engaged coming from the shoulders that we need to shift from the way we've been doing things in the past to something completely new, to something completely empowering so that we can continue doing the business uh, correctly. Then when you set this, you define your vision, actually, where you want to go. I was happy to see that you say, see how your MFR will be in 10 years. We define how we will be in five years. We call it road to 2025. And they say, this is where we would like to be. And from this one, from this, stage, we define the strategy. We say, on business side, this is how we want to be. And then if we want to achieve all these that we have defined in the strategy, we have to define who has to do what and say, what do we need and what do we have in a place that we can leverage on and move forward? What do we need as uh, what we have identified as gaps to move forward? But this was not done only by a few people sitting in head office, but this was done through a survey with for all employees, they all gave the ideas how things should move. So we went to an approach where only few were deciding by an approach where you are including everybody. So everybody is buying the strategy. Everybody has received the explanation. Everybody has understood how to do it. This was really actually helpful because Today, when we are delivering, executing, we don't have to go back and explain why we're doing it because in the first place, everybody understood why we're doing what we're doing and to make it easier afterward to implement and move forward. And I think um, what was really uh, successful, what I can consider as the success factor was actually the understanding of within the organization, how we should do things differently in order to sustain our model and in order to face the challenges that we're actually facing and so that we can continue providing and availing to our customer our most effective uh, financial services so that they can develop, grow. By growing, by developing, they will be creating value for us and for the company. Thanks. Uh, thanks a lot, Uc. And uh, Isabel, you have a reaction. Um, actually, I have a question. Um, you, you mentioned um, and uh, just now you explained how you how you went about. Um, you mentioned that you've changed from actually being really very target oriented to being more people centered as an organization. Um, you've described how you did it and, and which elements you, you put into place in order for this really tremendous change actually 
uh, to to be guided and and to to be successful. Um, would allow me to ask an, quite an open question: What were elements from which you would actually say this these these were difficulties along the way so far um, during this road? And maybe also, um, where would you say you are? Would you say we have succeeded? We we have as an organization. Um, really now reached the point to being a fully people-centered organization. Um, and we've, we've moved away from the culture of being target-oriented towards, um, towards being people-centered. Uh, would you say you've, you've reached there or would you say you're still on the way? And, and if so, um, what, are, what are things that are sort of uh, holding you back? What are, what are the challenges that, that you've uh, encountered? Yeah, it's a, the, the journey is very long. We're just starting. And I think we still have uh, miles to go before we reach what we're expecting. But uh, responding to a question, we went back to a question and we say, uh, what is the ultimate mission that was given to the institution? Is actually creating the value, creating the value for the company, creating the value for the shareholders. Then we, we, we ask ourselves, if this is the, the main aim, how best should we implement things in order to reach this. Usually in the past, the focus was by delivering very good result, short result, whatever it takes us to go there, by providing to the shareholders the information that we have provided the result that was set in the business plan, that is. And we say, in the discussion, you find yourself in a situation where you have to discuss three clients what we call uh, within Baobab, the customer triangle. You have the employee, you have the owner, the shareholder, then you have the partner. So if you, the ultimate goal is to create value, you need, this value can only be created by the third component of this triangle, which is the partners, what we call usually the customer, because if they are using, they're transacting with us, then they are creating value. But they will only transact with us if they are getting the experience and they are getting satisfaction from the interactions they are having with us. Or this satisfaction or this experience is they are only getting it through the employees. So if we wanna change the narrative, so if we wanna create a value, we must focus on our employees. If the employees are taken care of correctly, then they will take care of the partners. If partners are satisfied, they'll come back to us, they will transact with us. Because they are transacting, because they are creating value, then we can create the value for the company and for the shareholders. So we completely change by going looking for short-term goals, focusing on investing on our human capital to see if we invest in them and we equip them with knowledge, we keep we equip them with resources. They can actually take care of the business by themselves. We say, what does it take us? Because we've been focusing only on short-term goals. We say, let's go by investing first in the knowledge. We completely change the training programs for the newcomers where they are coming. We prepare them not only to go and sell products and services, but actually to think about client satisfaction. And we say, if the newcomers are coming with this new mindset. What about the existing one? Because they've been operating with this older mindset where they only focus on selling instead of taking care of customers. So we changed also, we implemented new refresh training programs for them so that they can move from the old system to the new one. And then you have in within the organization, most of the, one of the most difficult part, which is the middle management, because we're asking them to be strategic, but not too strategic operational, not too operational. When all this stuff is coming, you need to train them to see how best they can manage business on daily basis and provide this uh, experience to a customer. So we implemented a middle management empowering program where they are taken through a six months program to know how to deal with their colleagues, how to deal with themselves, how to deal with a product and services, but more importantly, how to deal with customers. And then you say, if these three components, these three blocks beyond are trained and prepared to face 
and provide this experience and create value for the companies. What about the senior managers? Because they have also to understand and to position themselves in supporting and backing the operation. So we went also by sending them to some uh, certification programs, uh, some intensive uh, training programs on leadership, on management, on people uh, and talent development. So by bringing all together, we actually started something where we actually changing the mind, shifting it completely, moving, moving it from only specific short-term goals to more long-term goals where we focus on people. Uh, because we're focusing on people, these people actually driving the goals, driving the transaction and driving, creating the value for the company. So uh, there are some things that are hindering or some factors that are not really blocking. But for me, the, the very difficult one was actually the mindset. Actually. You know, when you have been operating uh, the last 15 years in a certain way, and then you have to shift, it's not that easy. You need to go through intensive program of discussion, training, explanation, making sure that you are there to respond to any obstacles that are manifest. So the, the, the process has started, but I think we still have a long way to go uh, to, to change the mindset that was there for 15 years and move towards something that we, we, we know and we're working that we know that this will create value for the company. So a lot has still had to be done, but I think the more important is actually step by step, we are changing, we are improving, and we are correcting what was there and what was not really uh, properly implemented. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, thanks a lot for, for sharing uh, your experiences. And uh, Manusha, would you like to, to add something uh, listening uh, to uh, Uke? Um, for us, uh, uh, challenge, main challenge in uh, this way was uh, maybe um, strategic uh, HR uh, needs and uh, demands the involvement of people uh, uh, in the processes. Um, and uh, one of them, uh, it's, uh, I mentioned that uh, one of the crucial uh, roles there was a um, decision from uh, founders, but uh, anyway, it is not enough uh, if you have no organizational culture, because organizational culture does not come only from founders. Maybe it comes um, from the, uh, from the, uh, ordinary people who are working for the company. Um, yes, uh, management and founders are responsible for implementing, for maintaining and enhancing their values, maybe making changes, but uh, their um, support is, is not enough. Uh, and uh, uh, to have um, uh, good talent management, it needs uh, uh, engagement, high level of engagement of employees. And uh, I think that um, in our point of view, oh, the um, easiest way to have an engaged uh, employee is uh, to have um, not only satisfied, but the people who are happy delight uh, 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 so and um, one of the cha challenges and uh, not only the challenge which we faced in the past years which we face now it's to have not only successful not only satisfied employees but happy employees happy for working in a company uh, and because of uh, this uh, circumstance is changing, changing their motivations and uh, we should be um, uh, in every time on the same page. So uh, I think that um, uh, one, um, another crucial point is the organizational 
culture, but this organizational culture is not very static. It, it is changing too. And the management should follow and should bring uh, new values to be attractive for the um, people who are working for the company. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, and I've just taken a peek into, uh, into the Q&A section um, in the chat, and there were actually two questions uh, that, that popped up. Um, maybe one um, th that is mentioned by Erasto Panis. Um, what is, um, let me see, um, for, what is a good way to respond to the manpower requirements challenges, um, considering that the work setup has changed from um, being a more face-to-face -face, um, uh, activity um, towards uh, working more from home. So I guess this is also uh, an element of, of digitization. So maybe uh, Manu Shara, since you yeah. mentioned this element, maybe you would like to, uh, to yes. share your view. During the uh, pandemic situation, we faced this challenge because there was no opportunity, even if, uh, um, according to the regulation, we have some restrictions. So, to, uh, and we um, transform our working, and um, uh, in during the pandemic, we became like a remote working company, head office mostly, head head office people were working remotely. Uh, and it is challenging because in uh, remote working is some kind of uh, comfort for the uh, employee because they have opportunity to mix uh, uh, working with uh, everyday life, with family, uh, to be close with families, uh, to um, such a spend, uh, such a um, oh, maybe without stress. Uh, 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 time, but uh, it it is challenge for organizational culture. Um, it's challenge for organizational loyalty, brand loyalty. So, uh, and uh, now we uh, prefer to have uh, to have, uh, to have mix uh, working from uh, office and work, uh, remote working, and we have special schedule for of um, employees. We have some um, basic rules to at least, uh, it depends on the position, but generally we have such rules that at least one two day from the office. And this one two day is uh, like a scrum meetings to uh, meet, to plan, to report, uh, and uh, not only use, uh, not only for the such an official to just to, um, socialize and to have to such a have uh, 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 real social connection with the people who are with the team uh, members and so because of it to maintain this social network within the organization we have such kind of mix and we uh, see that there is um, uh, such a um, uh, interests from the employee because the flexible uh, working um, condition is very valuable in current time. A lot of knowledge-based uh, employees asking for such kind of flexibility because uh, especially uh, for the IT people, IT project manager, there is no big need to be in the office every day from nine of, uh, to six o'clock. So, and uh, we see that there is no necessity, but there is some kind of demand. We should uh, 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 to put some enforce for uh, organizational culture and loyalty to meet it, each other to have some connections, so emotional connection with each other. So we have such system, partly from uh, remote and partly uh, working from office. Thank you. 
Great, thank you very much, Manushar. And there's actually a second question um, that came into into the chat, and um, maybe you you would like to to share your view on that one. Um, the question is, what are your best practices in retaining employees amidst global resignation? So basically, what are you, what are your uh, ideas and and uh, best practices in in uh, employee retention? Oh, I think the, the main challenge for uh, um, uh, current situation is um, that uh, every company wants to digitalize uh, their um, operations. D digitalization needs IT people, and generally, IT people are not very loyal to the brand. They are uh, so the, these kind of people love change, uh, challenge, uh, um, and they um, ask not only such basic things like a good office uh, conditions and good salary, they ask uh, for joy and for uh, uh, something uh, X factor. So uh, um, we have special project this year. Uh, we think that um, uh, this uh, pandemic situation has some um, uh, negative uh, um, uh, effect uh, on brand loyalty. So we introduce new project for brand loyalty. We uh, have a lot of team building events to meet to make people meet each other to uh, to share some experience each, uh, uh, with each other um, another um, recommendation is uh, uh, talent development i mean skills development and to put effort for people's development and i mean uh, in a um, um, middle term, uh, e, e, this effort would have the results um, when you invest in, in skills and talent development, I mean, training, so knowledge uh, gaining and so on. So this is our experience. Uh, we are, as I mentioned, we are on the way. We have just uh, um, uh, uh, trying to find some new ways to um, maintain and to retain good professionals uh, and to um, uh, make them happy working for our company. So maybe it is not enough, but uh, we are trying to do some. We, and this year, for example, we have special um, competition. We're trying to put some in some X uh, motivation factors uh, to uh, uh, change such a atmosphere of working, to not to make it very such a routine, and to make it like a um, like like an online game, for example, to, re to have some challenge, to reach the uh, goals, to get the award, to get get the, some. Um, recognition and uh, we are putting some point of gamification uh, in, in everyday work because um, uh, you know microfinancial organization is an organization with uh, mostly uh, with um, direct marketing uh, we uh, have a lot of loan officers. They have every day their job is to sell the product. And we are trying to put in their everyday routine life some um, point of gamification. And we see the result, the result is um, good. Mm -hmm. If I may yeah. just add on what uh, Manisha leveraging on the question you asked, uh, I think the, the, the crucial point is creating uh, a friendly and a very peaceful working environment where people feel safe, uh, where they can work and relate to others. How do you do it? I would say be consistent with your corporate values and principles. When you are co consistent with them and people feel that this is a place where they can work, 
where they can grow, where they can develop, where they can uh, challenge themselves and challenge within the organization. This is one of the key factors that make them uh, stay. Another one is actually the investment you are making on them, the investment you are making on the human capital. How do you equip them? How do you help them to develop? How do you help them to realize themselves within the organization? And what are the responsibilities that you give them? We're talking about empowerment, actually. Uh, empowerment, uh, giving them possibility to decide, giving them possibility to make also to, to, to fail and then learn from this failure without really being on them, but actually supporting and backing them and supporting them to grow and leverage on the mistakes that they made. But also having in place a, a fair compensation system. It's not because you are creating an environment that you should be paying people less or incentivizing them less than what the market is actually offering. Being fair, putting a fair compensation system that will actually support them and move forward. And another element that work actually Manusha was mentioning is that recognition. We have seen in our case, for example, we actually, we moved from a growth almost of zero. Today, we are having a growth of almost 30%. Why? One of the key factors that we came across is that on a monthly basis, we are publishing the best of the best. The best we did something on uh, disbursement, on taking facing customers. And we have seen a competition within the institution where people are willing to do better. They are willing also to be, to receive this award. There is no any money attached to this recognition, but actually they're proud that I have done, I have accomplished something within the organization that is consistent with the values and the principles. It makes people stay, even though they can be paid much more elsewhere because you have created an environment where they feel safe, where they feel that they can develop. I think this is one of the key elements that will make them stay within the organization. Thank you uh, so much. So many uh, interesting points. And I think, uh, yeah, it's really now I have the, the tough job to uh, uh, announce uh, the the end of our webinar because uh, actually our time budget is, is already um, up, um, but let me try to uh, summarize a bit and and wrap up what what we have uh, discussed. Um, so I think we have we have a lot of uh, common understanding that uh, HR actually really is a very uh, crucial and important uh, factor to implement um, uh, the strategy of an organization. Uh, we have uh, also uh, agreed that um, it's you know when you want to move from uh, the administrative uh, part of HR to a more strategic one that it's a gradual process it's it can be a long long and bumpy uh, road but you need somehow the uh, the pa yeah patience time and and uh, continuous engagement to move this process uh, forward you've mentioned um, that uh, it's also very um, important that you engage your leaders uh, and then we had this interesting discussion on on the role of middle management and also somehow the difficulties of uh, engaging uh, middle management. Uh, so leaders to really uh, implement uh, actively um, human resource development. Uh, you have mentioned uh, two push factors from, from your perspective. Um, so uh, technology being one and the other one, uh, and this I think even more important, the shift in mindset um, that uh, is needed not only from top management and founders, but also from, from the employees. Um, and you've mentioned many, many ideas how to facilitate this, this process process. Um, one was to really create an understanding of um, why do we need uh, to change? Why do we need to do things different than, than we did them the last uh, 10 or 20 years? Um, what actually is our vision um, for, for the future? Uh, and then uh, there not get tired of repeating and repeating this again and again. Um, you've also mentioned uh, that it's important to ensure participation and really engage uh, people from all over um, the the organization that you also need of course time it's nothing that you can that you can do overnight so to say um, 
and uh, to mention uh, also uh, our discussion on how to retain good people uh, and there uh, you said that um, it's really important to create a friendly atmosphere to really uh, give people uh, the feeling that um, this is where they can the place where they can develop um, their potential where they can grow and where they are really uh, taken uh, seriously with their uh, concerns um, and ideas and uh, yeah from this long list uh, uh, I think uh, we can we can see that it was really interesting uh, discussion, and I would like to uh, yeah thank uh, our two panelists here, um, Mr. Uh, Bonch from from Baobab Madagascar and Manusha Shitashvili from Crystal Georgia. It has been a great pleasure to exchange with you, uh, to hear your views, to get uh, new ideas and impulses uh, how to strengthen uh, HR and to learn from from your experiences. Um, and uh, yeah, what else? Um, I think Joanna has already, uh, our colleague from, from EMFP has already posted some information in the chat. This is, uh, as we said in the beginning, only the first of, uh, of uh, some upcoming uh, webinars. Um, so just have a look at the uh, link that um, was shared in the, in the uh, chat and you can see the dates and times and topics for, for the upcoming webinar on, for example, supporting managers uh, in their HID roles, or really this uh, topic that we uh, discussed about middle management, and also about um, equal opportunities for uh, women, which is going to happen in October. And at this point, also a big thank you to uh, Joanna and her team from, from the EMFP for organizing this webinar, for making it possible and, and promoting it. Isabel, have I forgotten something? Not necessarily. I just wanted to, to re-mention the two links that Joanna has shared in the chat. Um, the download uh, of, uh, of the results uh, of the research, the survey that, uh, that the HR Action Group has carried out, um, as well as uh, a short document um, where you can also re-look re at the graph that we shared um, uh, named uh, with the, the strategic HR graph that we that we shared. So the two links were shared by Joanna in the chat, um, and also a huge thank you uh, from my side to uh, Ugen and, and Manushar. Um, I can uh, only stress that I fully agree with with everything uh, you've mentioned, uh, and I'm very happy to hear that microfinance organizations are uh, shifting from being uh, purely results oriented to being people centered. I think this, uh, uh, this will lead to uh, ultimately actually achieving the goal that, that stands behind microfinance much more. Uh, so I'm very happy to, to hear uh, about your experiences and approaches. Thank you very much. And of course, also a big thank you to all our attendees and uh, participants for uh, yeah for for joining us here, for uh, providing your questions, for providing your input. Um, so it has been a great pleasure. And uh, with this, I would say um, to everyone a good day, a good afternoon, a good evening. So we have a very different time zones uh, uh, for for everyone. And uh, yeah, it was nice uh, to have you all here. And yeah, all the best. Thank you so much you for this much. opportunity. Good luck. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Bye bye.